Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of LLC with me, David Windsor. You know the deal. It's another beautiful day, another lesson to be learned, another conversation to have about it. And as always, there's a lesson to be learned. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, you're going to learn that Tiger Woods actually is not going to be on the show today. Man, I am... <laughs> Gosh, I'm really sorry. I've been, I I don't know what else to say, but we're you know Tiger Woods will not be in the show. I know you guys were showing up for Tiger Woods, and I sincerely apologize. He's not going to be in the show today, but we're all here to still learn a lesson. And if you stay tuned, Tiger Woods might just be on the show next week. So that being said, I want to discuss with you guys today a couple of things. Um, I want to talk about. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of LLC with me, David Windsor. You know the deal. It's another lesson to be learned, another conversation to have about it. And another conversation we're having about a lesson learned is that Tiger Woods is not going to be on the show today. My apologies. Tiger Woods, 15-time major champion Tiger Woods, is not going to be here today. But that's all right. We still have some conversations to have and some lessons to be learned because we're always learning. We're always growing. We're always trying to get better at the things we do. And if we don't, then we're kind of just cruising through life and expecting no different result. If you don't expect a different result, then how do you expect a different life? And it's my belief that we all want a different kind of life in some way or the other. You want to be happier or more fulfilled in some category of your life. There's just one category as a parent in your health, in your relationship, in your business, in your finances, whatever your category is, we all want to grow a little bit at some point in life, right? If we don't, then man, you're just sitting around doing nothing. So it's my belief that there's a lot of growth to be had out of lessons learned. Conversations with other people about the mistakes you've made and how you can grow from those mistakes is a great way to figure this out. And there's, a, there's an individual that is quite, they're growing as a social media presence in the world of construction. They have, I don't even know, you know, 700,000 followers or something, and they're, they're just doing really well in their online business, but their construction business is crushing it too. And I ran into this person, and we had exchanged some stuff online before. They had commented once or twice on my content, so there was some familiarity with that. So when I talked to them, I was asking them about this post they made the other day, and it was, it was this really intimate post. And so it was about leveling up as a team and what they do as a team and what their standard is as a team and their team meetings. And, and as new scopes hit, i.e. foundation or electrical or whatever, they meet with the whole team and they go out on site and meet with the electricians, the insulation crew, and they, they, they get everyone together in the same room and they have these conversations. And I was like, man, that's, that's killer because we don't do that. We do that with some of our people. We meet with some of the individuals and we're on our job sites every day, but we don't have like a Let's learn everything there is. Maybe we bring out a sales rep for the window company or the cabinet person to talk with the counter guy and make sure that everything's coordinated. What needs to be coordinated out in the field? These are great ways to do this. And I was kind of singing this person, you know, give them some praise, let them know like, hey, like this is, this is really valuable stuff and I appreciate what you're doing for the community. It's pretty cool what you've done. And this, you know, their business is probably doing a hundred million dollars in sales a year and they're killing it out in the, the influencer world of social media as a business owner in the construction world. So we're chatting about it. We've, we, you know, we're, like I said, we're slightly familiar with each other and we're just having some conversations. And it was kind of cool to just wrap out with someone that knew, um, that was just call it like, I like to call it like a big brother to me in the sense of they're one step ahead. They're one age gap bigger than us. You know, in our case, there are a couple age gaps. Let's just say age gaps are by $25 million each. You know, they're, they're a couple age gaps ahead of us. So, they're like a big brother to me in that sense. And so I'm kind of picking their brain and learning how they took their company from where I'm at and took it to the next level. And as I'm having this conversation with this individual, he, let me, all right, let me circle back. So the reason I'm talking about this conversation with this individual is because there's lessons learned. There's things that have happened on our job sites recently. And it's because we just haven't asked the right questions. It's nothing catastrophic. My example of this is we have this, remodel that we're doing. And the electrician told us we need to, to level up the power. We need to get more amperage in the house. We need a 400 amp panel instead of 200 amp panel. Great. What do we need to do? Well, I got to run this line from the street, from the meter box 
you know, to your, to your home. Okay, great. So what we got to do, we got to expose this line, but this line is, ex it's, it's not in a conduit. This house was built a long time ago. So it's super dangerous. We can't dig with a live line in the ground and no sand, no tape and no conduit. So we're like, okay, what we got to do? Well, we got to shut the power off in order to do that. We got to get emergency disconnect. So we get the emergency disconnect. We tell the person what we want to do. We dig it all open, we get the conduit in, the city comes, the city inspects it, then we call the power company and we're like, hey, we need you to come back and hook up this line. And they're like, whoa, 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 hold up. You need to talk to an estimator because this line services multiple houses. This particular box services the adjacent properties. Okay, what does that mean? That means you probably have to upgrade this box. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, we gotta have an estimator come out. They're gonna take whatever time and it's gonna take, you know, about four weeks to get the box. And then we're super busy with that. That's a lot of work. So then in order to upgrade the box, we got to get, that's going to be about eight weeks to get on our schedule. So now we're looking at 12 weeks out. Here's the problem. Our client went out of town and they're out of town for a month. So we scheduled this work around this time because we had to cut their driveway open. They can't get in their house, but there's a big hole in their driveway. One, two is it's starting to get freezing temperatures. So we've turned off the water, we've bled all the water lines, we've gotten ready, but we thought this power would be off for about three to five days. We're now rolling into a week, going into the weekend, and we call this power company, we're like, hey, we need this power back on, like this house needs, this house needs heat, it's gonna get down to single digits. And they're like, oh, you should have done it like this. You need to upgrade the box, it's gonna take all this time. We're like, holy shit, like that's not acceptable, like we need, we got you guys got to help us out here and they're like yeah you know if someone's living there we need this we need this power turned on this could be catastrophic this water lines freeze or something yeah you're right you're right so they're like tell you what we'll do a temporary whatever get the power turned back on um we'll come do that tonight or tomorrow and then power will be on but we're still going to be about 12 weeks till we can get you that box and upgrade this power that's fine thank you so much appreciate you doing that for us yep and that was our lesson learned the conversation we had about it immediately after this happened, immediately after this happened. Hey team, we didn't ask the right questions. We just went ahead based on what the electrician told us needed to happen and we just went for it. We just disconnected the power line, we started doing all this shit and we didn't do our research. We didn't get the proper people in the room to have the conversation and say, hey, power company, can you come meet us on site? We need to do this, we have this window, we need you know, our clients out of town, we, you know, we got to turn the power off. Therefore, we don't want this house to freeze. So we got a quick weather window. How do we need to do this? Will you come out and give us like an assessment of what needs to happen? We didn't do that. We just went for it. And we're thinking we're killing it, getting ready for schedule. And we're going to bust this thing out in five days. And we're like heroes. And we got lucky that the boss got on the phone. The, the, the receptionist was like, there's nothing I can do. And then the estimator was like, yeah, sorry. And I was like, that's not acceptable. And then they got their boss, the manager on the phone. And he was like, we'll get you some temporary power. We got lucky. We got lucky. We didn't ask the right questions. We didn't do our due diligence. We didn't take our time when it came to performing this scope. We just kind of went rogue and it was nothing catastrophic. We got lucky, but the lesson learned was there. We got to slow down. We got to get the right people in the right room. And I'm talking about this individual going back to this contractor that this influencer and the day that this happened, he posted this video about how him and his team meet on site with all the appropriate parties. They meet with the concrete crew. They have a concrete meeting in the office. They meet outside with the concrete crew. They meet with the frame crew. They meet with the designers and learn about how the cabinets are going to hit where the, the tile goes and what the, the reveals on the doors are. They have all these meetings. And so I'm telling him like, Hey man, like, you, that video was perfect timing for me. Like I can't even believe it. And I was like, you guys are doing great stuff and I really appreciate the content you're producing. And there's a, there's two parts to this podcast. I'll say as I'm halfway through this story. So this, this episode is about the lessons learned about how to be better as a teammate, but then also the lessons learned about how we're all human. And so when I'm saying this to this individual, and I'm like, hey man, like this is really incredible. Thank you so much for you know everything you do for us in the community. And he goes, you know, like I watch your content, and I think what you're doing is great. I think you you're saying you're just you're preaching some good stuff, man, and I appreciate it. And I I often like people are always coming up to me and saying like, 
I love the work you guys are doing and it's awesome. And he goes, and I really don't think that we're doing that great of a job. And I think that we keep messing up and you know, we can be better. We should be better. And, and, you know, but people tell me how great we are and I, I, I just don't believe it. And, you know, to toot my own horn, what he was telling me about what he liked about my content and how I appreciate my content because I'm talking about this dumbass shit. I'm being vulnerable enough to tell you how we fucked up on our job when it came to this power. Did we really mess up? Not that bad, but we messed up. We got lucky. What if the power company was like, sorry, not going to happen. You're going to get no one coming to that job for the next 12 weeks. We talked about this. What would have happened if they didn't do that? Here's what would have happened. We would have either had to put our client up in a hotel for three months because our client works from home and our client needs somewhere to live. And that's peak season in our town. That's, we couldn't afford that. We go, we go out of business. Peak season in our, in our town during ski season, cheapest hotel is like 500 bucks a night. I mean, we'd be hosed and you can't even get anything for three months. Yeah, right. Or you'd have to go live with this friend and find like a place to live. It would have been catastrophic is what it would have been. So going back to like just tooting my own horn here, what he liked about my content was that I'm, I'm being vulnerable enough. I'm sharing the lessons learned. And he said to me, I feel like we're not doing that good of a job. People always tell me I'm doing a good job and we keep making these mistakes. And he's like, but when you make these videos, you make me realize I'm not the only one making the mistakes. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't say this, but I was like, yeah, duh, duh. You know, it's nice for me to hear that someone doing a hundred million dollars in sales is making mistakes. And he feels like they're not good enough. Or, you know, people think that they're doing all this great stuff and their content's so great and they think that their business isn't running that well. That's the fear of an entrepreneur. That's the fear of a human. The imposter syndrome. The feeling that you're not deserving of what you've earned and achieved. The feeling like you're gonna mess it up. Like it's gonna just get out of your fingers all of a sudden. It's just, you're just right on the edge of like, is this thing gonna blow up? Am I gonna get another job? I just fired an employee. Am I gonna find anyone else? One of my best employees just left. They just went for another job. They just quit. I'm, how can I even replace this person? My world is gonna end. This person does so much for my business. You know, my spouse just left. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, holy cow, like, I, I'm never gonna get it together. All these things hit us as humans and we feel like we're incapable and we don't belong when we achieve. And the reality is you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. So here this guy is, I'm looking up to him. He's doing a hundred million in sales. And I'm like, man, this is where I want to be. This is, this is where we want to grow to. This is the size business we want to have and achieve. And I'm like, holy cow, I know nothing about that. I don't know anything about this business. Like, I am nervous. Like, I don't even know what I would do. Like, I don't even know if I could do it. Blah, blah, blah. And then this person's telling me that they don't even know if they can do it. But yet they've already gotten there. They've already achieved it. And they're doing it. But they're still in that vulnerable state. And being in that vulnerable state allows you to grow. It allows you to say, hey, I'm, I don't know everything. I need help. Whether you're asking help from your team, your family, your friends. But when you're running a business and you say to your team members, hey, I don't know everything. Accountant, I need you to level up and help us. I, you know, like, I'm getting lost in all these numbers. This is getting overwhelming for me. I need you to create spreadsheets and charts and you know, data and balance sheets that I need to review and put them in a bunch of colors and make them super easy for me to read because I'm not good at this stuff, but I need to start understanding it and getting more engaged in our business and how our cash flow is working. That's just one aspect, you know? You got, the, the project management side, you got the superintendent side, you got the sales side, the marketing side, the, I mean, what, what divisions are you going to run and what individuals are you going to coach and help have them help you level up? That's how you grow a business. So I'm in a phase now where we have to hire more people as well. And I'm, I'm about to do this marketing campaign. And as I'm going into it, I'm like, holy shit, like what if it works? I got to hire like 
if it works, I got to hire four or five new people. Now I'm afraid I don't know how to manage all those people. That's my, that's my current fear in this business. How am I going to manage all these people? Am I a good enough manager? Will I do a good job? Are they going to want to work for me? Am I going to fuck it up? Oh my God, like what's going to happen? Holy shit, can I even do this? Maybe we're just good growing our business where it is. Maybe we don't want to grow. You know, like, this is a pretty good size. I don't, I don't know if we want to even get any bigger. These are literally the thoughts that I'm having with myself all the time. As I'm like, wow, I think this marketing thing is going to work. we got this marketing book. This marketing book, you open it up, starts playing a video. And in the video, we got client testimonials. We got about our company and then we got our four signature guarantees. We're guaranteeing a maximum fee. We're guaranteeing a completion date, same day communication and daily logs. These are the things that I think are going to separate us from our competition. I'm about to go out and do this and call 700 real estate agents. Where I'm going with this is if this thing works, holy cow, I think it will work, but I'm doing the math. That's a lot of jobs. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of new people. It's a lot of systems in our business that we don't have and aren't capable of, of running without these systems. That's intimidating. So circling all the way back to this guy, he's in the same intimidation factor. He's feeling like he doesn't, he's becoming kind of famous. He's like, I don't know if I can handle this. People are coming to me with questions. People think I'm so great. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm that great. I don't think what we're doing is that great. Like I, every day I think I'm gonna lose my business. And it made me realize we're all just human. We're all going through these thoughts together. And whether you're looking at me, like whether you're doing a million dollars a year, $500,000 a year, and you want to get to a million, five million, 10 million, and you're looking up to someone like me or another influencer online that's, you know, double the size of your business, call it 500,000, but they're doing a million now. Instead of a million, they're doing 2 million. And you're like, man, you know, that person's having the same fears that you're having, trying to go to their next level, going from 1 million to 3 million, going from 3 to 5, going from 5 to 10. Those people are having the same fears that I'm having, that this other individual is having, and it's okay to have them. That means you're growing. That means you're stretching. That means you're testing your character and your ability, and that is business. The purpose of a business is to make money and grow. And in order to grow, you have to change. In order to change, you have to just do things differently. You have to implement new systems. You have to start working on different things. You're no longer working on the things that you were currently working on for the last year or two. You're working on things that are different. First, you're coaching people how to take that over for you. You're coaching individuals how to take over specific roles that you're currently working on, that you're graduating from because you now don't have the time to do that and you're paying this person to do that. Then you're working on the new tasks, the new things to do in your business, the new ways to level up, and become a leader and lead those individuals in the organization to do their job. When they do their job, you can do your job of growing the business. You're not alone in your thoughts of being a human being and having anxiety, fear, doubt. It's part of it. Lean into it. Going back to the first part of this podcast now, the second portion, the second LLC of this episode, the second lesson learned to being a human, you have to see what other people are doing and be bold enough to implement it, to send it to your team, to say, we're doing this. So I watched this person's video right after we had this power incident and I sent it to my team and I said, hey, we dropped the ball. We got lucky. Nothing catastrophic happened. Let's not make this mistake again. This is a lesson learned. This is an LLC. This is a teachable moment for all of us. And this individual is where we want to be. They are running a business that we ultimately aspire to be. We've all agreed upon it. This is the direction we want to go. This is the type of business we want to run. This person is doing these things pre-construction meetings, they're implementing these things on site and in the office on a weekly basis in their construction company. And they're doing exactly the amount of work that we wanna do. Maybe, hey, just maybe, here's an idea. If we wanna get there, we should do some of this too. This is what the big dogs are doing. This is what the people that we aspire to be are currently doing in their business. 
we want to level up, we want to get better, we better start doing this. Or we're going to keep fucking up on stupid shit, like not knowing the power box is big enough because we didn't schedule a meeting with the power company just to learn, just to get educated. That's the difference. If you want to level up and be where someone else is currently, study them or other people like them and implement what they say and what they do into their business. Clearly something they're doing is working. So if you're not going to do it, then you better question, do you really want to get better? Do you really want to grow? Because if you're not doing it, the answer is no. This is a lesson to me too. This is me preaching to myself too. Hey, buddy, yeah, you. You gotta do this too if you wanna grow. You can see all the Instagram reels you want. You can read all the books you want. You can listen to all the podcasts you want. If you haven't listened to the LLC podcast, I mean, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please go do it right now. Pause this episode, go like and subscribe to LLC. Rate and review this. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Learn your lessons, your lessons learned. Don't be watching stuff, listening to stuff, and then not taking that information and implementing that information. You might as well just not even listen to it. If you're just gonna listen to it and go, oh, that was a cool idea, and then do nothing about it, well then what the fuck? You might as well just have some music on and just jam out. Because it's great that you're learning stuff, but if you're not implementing that stuff, did you really grow? Not at all. So I've learned this for a long time. I was the king of consumption of good shit and not good output. So, man.